Hey peeps, I'm Dr. Corbush and this is the uh, Sponsor Square Pants movie Any Percent Beginner Tutorial. Yes, yeah, so we're going to show you what tricks you do, wait, how you do them, and all we do the tokens in. I presume you played the game before. If not, play the game, then it's a lot more satisfying. The first level is no cheese. Uh, it's just getting you used to game mechanics. So we see this truck here is out of control. The game wants you to hop in those boxes. We say no. And we just hop up on the back of the truck. That's a little minor thing that saves a second. Second rule, we're just going to activate the cutscene, go through and hit the enemy. Here we have a slide and we have the trick for we have the trick for uh, beginners in no cheese slide skip. So I'm hopping at this rock and um jump into it once you've opened up those boxes. We're going to slide on it to store up momentum to help us get the get the jump. So normally if you do this you'd have to slide and can't make the jump. Now we we increase our momentum, yeah. And so we're going to go and slide on the right rock for about three seconds. One. Now if we're sliding down, there's a final man in this token, which I use as my point of when to jump for it. See? We make it up. Then we just want to do this level. Um, this is for beginners, so if anyone actually does know, Chris does have an instant strategy. Tutorial up on, which, um, probably try and link it in the description. But this is for uh, wanting to, and with that, if you're on, on the old content, but like that, okay. but uh, that's no cheese, it's a quick segment have and slide skip. Once you get it down, you can. You don't have to hold the momentum on the rock for so long, but I do it. So what can I raid depression? This is our first Patrick level, and already we have a skip. It's the balcony jump. We're going to be hopping that balcony up there. Skips about thirty seconds. Of when we're going to do that, we're going to hop up here, and we're going to walk and double jump the balcony. Now we're aiming to get our upper torso. On the balcony, the game will think standing on it and pressure our double jump, double jump again. Balcony should look something jumps a bit early, so there's backup shots you can do, but I like reset because normally get first try and run. So, what you saw there, I got my upper top, I could jump again. I only got one jump because of a Glitch called second frame jump, which, but it means that we skip out 30 seconds on the This is the up chocolate creek room. Uh, normally, this is a late game token, but we're going to be coming back to this in about a minute, minute. and we're going to be doing up early. As you can see, you need the sonic. Uh, you need guitar to do it, you don't act so. Game. I hope I was heard for that. I was saying it just if I wasn't heard because I realised my mic's not up some. Um, I was just saying you need the Sonic Wave guitar for that, but we're going to be coming back and doing one minute thirty. So this this new this my I put in some things on this mic. So we're just going to be doing bouncy bouncy bouncy. Very simple token. It's either this or a combat rear challenge. This one's quick. That's what we did. We get a token and we're going to start walking back down. Walk back Mindy and press R as soon as possible. And we're going to spam B because it's we just. We now have cartwheel. I'm going, to up, I'm going to go into the upgrade menu and upgrade it. It's just useful for later. We're going to pause and walk back to up Chocolate Creek. Might have to turn the suppression on my mind. We'll see. If anyone's in chat, they can tell me if they can hear me or not. So, we're going to cartwheel over here. And then 
Kind of like the no cheese. We're going to use our cartwheel, which is quicker, so it has. So we, and that gives us more momentum in jumping. So we're going to cartwheel off this bike, off this point here. Double jump. I'm going to. I line myself up with the sprinkle. Cartwheel. Double jump. And you can see, even though I messed up, up that double jump, I still made it. We, we're going. And you should let jump. We'll go walk over here. That resets our sort of. Um, Return point, get hit by water or chocolate. So I'm going to line myself up. I'm now going to try and jump to the bottom left of the button. Um, perpendicularly down. And jump. That, that hits all the buttons. That gets me on top of the buttons. Now I'm going to hop over from the right button to the left button. Okay, I'm only hitting one button, so I need to over. Hit both buttons. You need to hit all four buttons. Very quickly, so I'm going to hit, walk, hit, hit, walk, hit. I realised I was a bit delayed on that. That opens up up Chocolate Creek for us. Now, I have to do arguably, and this is up Chocolate Creek early. I called it Part Wheel Creek because there's another way that which saves about 20 seconds, but it's a lot. Even the world runners to resetting it. So we will collect this. And we will pause and walk. And uh, walk back to walk back to the beginning. So once we're at the beginning. Just turn just turning the is that too loud? Oh. Hello? There you go, I was just messing about. We're going to cartwheel over to this popcorn cart. And we're just going to go straight to the end of the level now. So on top of this popcorn cart, we're going to do the same theory as balcony jump, but we're just going to cartwheel and double jump. So as you saw there, I slightly messed up, but because I got the double jump back, I could turn myself around and get a ledge grab. Um, if anyone is in chat, could you just say this is okay or not? Let's check myself two seconds. So let's just be really loud. Okay, so sorry about that. So we're just coming over and we go cartwheel double jump and that will that'll make it across the gap for us. I messed up a bit, so I got a ledge grab. So the end of the level is just there. Now we're going to, get, we're going to jump over it using the same idea as Bow Jump. There's a little knot here we can walk in, and then you want to double jump at your full height, so like this. And if you do it correctly, you sort of get a feel for it. You'll see Patrick just a bit like like that, and you'll get your double jumps back. And then we can just hop over and finish the level. So that's I made depression. Um, Cartwheel Creek really makes that tricky, makes the level easy. SpongeBob. We're now on to the first driving level. Uh, Sandwich Drone 101. Sadly, there are no tricks with it, and we're just going to be driving. Driving oh so much. So I'm going to take this turbo, I'm going to turbo cross the sand. Just to be efficient, you know. Um, some people turbo across the sand, some people turbo between the rocks. I'm going to show you both and then you can just choose which. So, they can... This... Savage Drawing 101 is all about um, nitro optimization and, move, and uh, movement optimization. So we're just going to be driving. I'm going to collect the second nitro and then we're going to nitro through this park on the grass. So at, after this bridge, I'm going to turn onto the grass, nitro, and then go between the lamp and the rock, nitro. If you hold down the nitro button, it actually automatically chases them together for you. So you don't have to constantly tap them. With the wrecking ball, if it's going away from you, uh, it's 
you've got a good cycle basically. There's a bit of a global cycle to this level, but it doesn't affect you that much. It just makes the ending easier or harder. There's a wrecking ball is going in a circle at the end. So I'm just going, you can sort of, you want to use your nitros on straights. So everyone has their own little routes they do. Then we all go straight and we we'll use your nitros in straight lines. So we'll just hit all the triggers. Up ahead is the shortcut that we're going to be using. It's a bit of time and it also gives us a nice little treasure chest. Oh, uh, oop. So coming up is a series of four nitros we do just to go around some ramps and be quick. Because ramps are slow. Also there's a wrecking ball. That's the fourth nitro. Um, also, if you notice, I've got my splits up on the side just so people, so you guys can see. Normally, I would have times no splits. It's just you get to see what order we do. Now, I got slightly fucked because I wanted that wrecking ball to be like ahead of us, but it wasn't. So I had to nitro later than I usually do. Sadly, missed that nitro. That's why that ending was a bit sloppy. And that's how it's drawn one one. I actually quite like it, it means I get to natural one like this. But, um. Oh. So now we're coming to my personal favourite level uh, 3000 Miles of Shell City, or 3K as we call it. This is where we get uh, SpongeBob's Moose Bash. Uh, we get that with 5 tokens. That's why we do up Chocolate Creek early, and Bash allows for some fantastic little tricks in this game called Bash Boost. What Bash Boostings are, they're sort of like, you, you, we hold down Bash after getting damaged and it gives us a boost. It's not frame perfect like it is in BFBB, but it's still quite cool. First one happens here, so I'm in between these two cracks in the rock. Jump, jump, spin, and then when you get damaged you hold down Bash. And it should look something like that. We then walk a bit out of bounds to the second area. Excuse me, I did. Go bash boost again. Come over here, jump, jump, spin. And then you all jump after your bash boost. That gives you a bit more horizontal height. Uh, horizontal. Now take out the enemies. Now, that's one Plankton's Towers. We're not actually going to take out because that's slow. I walk behind this plant, bash boost, jump. Because your bash, well, bash jump, because your bash actually gives you a bit more height. And same principle as balcony jump, if the game thinks we're on the ground, we're standing there, so it refreshes our double, it refreshes our jump. So we can just bash and jump. Now we're sort of to the main hub, okay? even though it doesn't make us warp, I say it's the main hub because there's so many tokens here. We're going to walk up to this rock. And we'll go bash boost uh, over it. So you saw I did a little slide and I could jump. And now we open up Bundy Challenge. And we're just going to skip this entire middle part of the level. No one wants to do it. We're now at the end of this bit, but we're going to go back. Because there's two tokens we missed. Uh, bouncy, Bouncy, Bouncy. And the sponge wall. So we're going to hit the Bouncy, Bouncy, Bouncy trigger. And that puts that token at the end by Bungie. But I've also mentioned we fit, we haven't done Spongebob yet and it's just coming up. So we're going to bounce too along on Bouncy Bouncy Bouncy, jump, spin, go into Spongebob. Uh, this is the first Spongebob, there are various challenges in the game. Like I said, if you played this game you know it. And um, at the end we have about one, one and a half seconds of free movement and control of Spongebob. So after we collect the token, we're actually going to pause and warp, and that saves us a loading screen, which, depending on what console you're running this on, can be quite a nice bit of time save. So you just want to casually go like this. I have actually lost runs to this before, I'm sad to say. Uh, I tried doing a quicker cycle, but it's riskier. It only saves a second or two seconds. I think I've timed it. It's like five seconds. This bit's the worst bit. And then, fan blades to. I'm waiting just to be safe. 
and then we collect the token. Now just after the token, I'm going to quickly do a little jig and then pause. So, like that. And now we want to warp to the bungee challenge. I was just showing you that we have free movement, but I didn't want to accidentally ruin it. So now we're going to do the bungee challenge. Leftover mechanic from, well, leftover glitch from BFBB. If you go on the bungees, you can set up what we call infinite bungee, which means we can just go like this forever, unless we get damaged or unless we go back to the top. And I've managed to glitch out. <laughs> so this is interesting. So I now have to reset up infinite bungee. So you want to quickly hit all these in rapid succession and collect the final token. Now, if you remember, the bouncy, bouncy, bouncy token was just outside the bungee area, and after the challenge is over, because we spawned it, these challenge, the token's still here. Walk and collect it. Uh, this was the one part of the game that me and Max, who's currently third place, um, helped to root in. It saves a load of screens and a bit of backtracking, so it's nothing major, but it's nice. Awesome. It, it, it loops up a lot nicer than the old route of like, we, we go bash boost up there, we then backtrack and then, uh oh. It just looks a lot nicer. So now we're just going to hop over to the floating block challenge, which is, has Spongebob on it, but it is a Patrick challenge. Um, there's no tricks that we do in floating blocks, so unless you watch the advanced tutorials. So we may need to advance the tutorial. There's a one frame damage boost on one later one. That's quite advanced, even I do it. So with this, we're really just looking to make a nice cycle. Um, and good time. So this is an okay cycle. Normally I'll be on the block I'm currently standing on about three seconds playing stuff you want to cartwheel as Patrick a lot because it's a quicker and it prevents B prevents something called second frame jump I mentioned second frame jump earlier it's on the second frame of landing the game doesn't has not restored your double jumps thus you only have one jump it, it's a weird glitch so it means that sometimes when you're trying to do a double jump it's particularly perilous by saying that far, far turns fast, you won't. So we cartwheel because a the cartwheel start and stop animation takes longer than two frames, and it's quicker. Double whammy. So now we're just uh, we're near the end of the level. Take out the spitter. If you watched any of my streams, you know I hate spitters. And now we come over to Patrick Get Steamed. As you can see, because of the ice block, it's Patrick Challenge, but um, we're just going to do a SpongeBob. So you just walk, you double jump, and you spin, and it turns out, oh look, you can do a SpongeBob. There's a certain cycle I want, I want the steam just to be ahead of me. And then. So. From here, I'm going to jump downwards onto this rock. You generally want to walk off, so just as you fall, you double jump. Open just up ahead, so double jump, spin. Ooh. Take it. Double jump, spin onto this rock, which doesn't hurt us, and then we can just grab over. If you're really good, you can just avoid the ledge grab, save a second or so. Um, Believe me, this trick is easier than doing it casually. I tried recording doing it casually for the tutorial, and I was like, that's too hard. So because I got here, I'm just going to quickly go back for this query patty as a safety one. So now we're going to, normally at the end, we have to go on that trampoline and do an arena. We're not going to do that, so we're going to line ourselves up with this natural jerk. Double jump, bin. And then I, I was a bit too far, so I died, so I need to be... Just ahead of this patch of dirt, so about here. So I like going about here. And then we just go bash boost to the end. 
the game kills you if you're too far away from a re from a recoil point or restart point. So you will get a feel for it. I go just in like step in front of that the it's gonna hit the spitter. And the level's just there, nice little trick we can do. Up up here and then you just get your double back. Now at the end of this level we're going to be doing the same thing we did in SpongeBob and pausing in the fade out to go back to uh, sandwich driving. This saves us a loading screen later of backtracking. You know, it's just after I collected it. Pause. Sandwich driving. If anyone's watching this on Twitch, is this okay right now or? So now we have. All the sliding driving levels have three challenges after the first time. We have the time challenge, which is easy. You get through the level in a certain amount of time. As I said earlier, I'm going to show you where else you can turbo. And where turbo is through these little bits here. A bit, bit more precise, but a bit quicker. They have a ring challenge where you have to go through a certain des a designated set of rings in order. Don't let the rings time out because you fail. There are no checkpoints. Then macho time challenge, which is just a... Do the say do the time challenge but with less time. So with with the with Sandwich Drum 11, you generally will complete the time challenge around 240, 245. So you will happily meet requirements from match. So also once again turn. Holding down turbo. That's a bit too far out, so I'm just gonna go on the outside of the lamp this time, not to risk it for a biscuit. Once again, we have Wrecking Ball going away from us. Turbo through the side, because it, it's a straight line that I can turbo in. And I was tempted, I was thinking of talking about something. Um, just, this game's been quite through a couple of reroutes. So, World Records currently 132, Xbox by Chris. Oh, yes, that's what I was going to talk about. Xbox One to meet version differences, so don't know what. There's three versions of this, not counting the PC One game. It's fun, but it's completely different. Um, you have the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox version. The Xbox version is by far the quickest one. The loading screens only take up about four minutes. Run. I know I've sat down, timed it. Um, so once again, sorry, I'm just going to say once again with. Nitros, because it's quick. The GameCube is the second quickest version, um, and has some minor benefits over the Xbox version. For example, one of the levels, Oblum Baby Hunt, the level that we're going to after Rub Dub, which we do after this, um, is runs at 30 FPS, which later, which makes a couple of the tricks in the media and advanced tutorial a bit easier because they're frame perfect so you then have effectively two frames of them one but um it, it, it comes with a drawback of on gamecube you have this glitch called infinite loading screen during loading screen your game may just randomly crash on gamecube there's nothing we can do about it um xbox has sandwich crash so if you're on Xbox or 360, I'm on 360, and you do sandwich drive mile one and you get past it, the little use nitro as a boost thing. If you try and start a new game after that, it will crash. You have to turn off your Xbox or go back to the home screen in order to avoid sandwich crash. We don't know why. It's, it's, I, it just crashes there, so... And then you have PS2, which I want to say loading screens are about. Uh, if if Xbox has about four minutes of loading screens, GameCube has about seven and a half of memory. I would like to say PS2 has about 12 minutes of loading screens, so it's by far the slowest loading version. Which is sad, because I played on PS2 version when I was young. Um, for beginners, don't be discouraged on what console you run. If you do want to take this game like semi-seriously, I highly recommend you invest in an Xbox or 60. From what we can tell, there's no real timing differences between the, the OG and 360, but we haven't actually timed. 
I haven't had time to because I've been studying and job hunting. So I did a couple of tur risky turbos in the park there. Don't do them. I'm just in it. And I was an awesome pilot because I was chatting about version difference. But the ring challenge is self-explanatory, which brings me on to another glitch this game has called Fake Ring. Um, sometimes a ring, you can drive through a ring and it will not register. This is most prevalent in Google Eyes and Smay knickknacks. That people have lost world records, people have lost bees to fake. So the way people, we say avoid it, or avoid or have a greater chance of avoiding it, always try and drive through the center of rings. Is that that the because even though you can sort of drive through the side, side rings like I do, I'm risky, it's much safer to drive through the center of them and it means that you don't possibly run. So, so I got hit by that wrecking ball. One, one could say I got wrecked by that wrecking ball because I did. I was on a bad timer. But you can. Oh my god. So, try try not to do as try try to do as I say, not as I do. Don't do what I do and drive through sides sides rings. Drive through centers like I am currently doing. It will save you so much time and pain. At least that, uh, sadly, of all things, it got us onto a nice time with that final wrecking ball. I have too many nitros because I was too scared to use them. Honestly, you, if there's loads of rings straight in a row, use the nitros across the line. That was a bit of a poor showing for ring challenge. If you guys can do better, leave me. I just, I'm not that good. So now coming to the macho time challenge. It's a time challenge, but there are four minutes. I have to do it in three minutes. I might have to do this to parts because I've got to go. Like mental exhaustion. Wow. I'll see if I can do this in one part for you guys. Also, if you do your first run. And on GameCube, may I recommend putting what? Don't do it normally, but if you're for a practice file, definitely. Or no, for a practice file, just unlock all lock them, lock all cheats. I'm now running out of things to talk about that art tricks because this is a nine-minute segment, and I, I normally fill this up with stories, jokes general chatter but uh it's really long also if the Beckham Ball's like coming back from the edge you can turbo early then make sure you don't get hit by it it's a nice reaction So, again, like I mentioned earlier, this this level sad. It has skips that work sadly, because the ending trigger is actually triggered by this part, by this um shortcut opening. Ah, it, it doesn't have an ending trigger at the end. It this end this bit early, but it's the ending. It's we were hyped when we found out there might be a trick, and then that's hyped. So don't worry, by the end of your first run you will be probably quite proficient in damage drone one. Um a nice little benchmark, you won't be at the centre of this bridge about 213 to 214 Then you're on a nice Because then it proves that this wrecking ball here is in front of us. I try and always get this nitro to then go across the sand, turn, and the uh, words of old Top Gear, and across the line.
So after that, get the token. Mindy's like, oh, do you want to see you can beat your own time? We don't want that, so we pause and then we come down, rub dub, hide in the top. Rubber number slips in the tub is another slide level, so sadly due to wait but this we have like 12 minutes slide levels. Um this level has a couple of tricks. I'm only going to be showing you one. Another trick called Dumb Jump. Manix has a tutorial on it, it's on this page. But um we're not gonna be doing dumb jump because you can Dumb Jump say dumb jump. That's why we call it that. Ooh. So, but there's one little trick that I'm going to do um, that saves us a nice, good, healthy for a second. So we're just taking out loads of planks through interesting and various means, such as chucking boulders, slamming them in into them with our face. There's an interesting, I think, am I later or say? We just, you know, cutscene. And a quick thing, um, for man this point, you won't be about 2,000 man this 2,000 plus man this point, out of, um, rubber dub, so, as, if you're following my route, you're generally ahead on that. It's just so we can do upgrade. Going along the edge here. And back to Manny's points. The upgrade. Um, different people upgrade different parts of the game. PS2 and GameCube, I'm pretty sure you can get the upgrade cutscenes. Xbox 360 users, you can't. So they have a minor edge over a few winner. The Loading screen wall, that's the word. If anyone's wondering why I'm struggling off, I'm only just it's alone. No one's chat, chat. Okay. The trick, though, that we do is coming up. So you see those, that, that little bit there? we will be jumping from left to right, going from left to right and then jumping. Like that. I, if you, and that just skips out a massive you. I say we sharply go left to right, it helps. I, we skip out that little angst there. And um, if you want, you, there's a frame perfect jump you can do to save time, which in it, 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 it lose all. And that's sort of the trick of Love Love's Love. Saves a nice 30 seconds. So we're going to be going. The, Inside route here, the infinitely obscure inside route. Nope. Now it's coming up to the ending. Hit that. We lose all control yet, so I can spam. And that's Rob Dub on the top. We will be revisiting this later. It's one of the uh, levels we do revisit for more tokens. Now it's time for Bubble Blown Baby. Like I said, minor on GameCube. This is 30 FPS on. This is 60 FPS. Uh, okay, I didn't know that. GameCube 30 FPS, Xbox 60. I was hitting my table, so that's why it might not pick up. So now I'll just go quickly upgrade the smash. This gives it an AOE stun, which will be useful. Now we're just going to cartwheel past all these patrons, upgrade cartwheel, um, does more damage, and it has a nice around it. Then we, like the first two moves you upgrade, it cartwheel. So yeah, it's.
Now we get to some fantastic enemies who uh, who put death up. Up over. Hit these enemies. And I'm just gonna try and dodge these enemies. And this room is like, if you somehow manage to get here as Spongebob, you're definitely not getting it as fast as. Like I said, if you play this, you better can do this level. That's why bullets are fantastic, they sometimes just hit you. So we're going to smash through this floor and up dip. Oh, uh, personally, my favourite challenge. Um, there's a skip you can do here, which is covered in the tutorial. This is intermediate and advanced tutorial. But um, we do it casually here, and I just love the music, I love the atmosphere, I love the fact that. Oh, nice little damage jump. All these thugs dancing. If this was an actual speed one, I wouldn't shut it off, but I just. Run. Because I've got okay, I thought I had one, and um, that's that is well. Let's go start. You can do a quicker route. I just want to show it off because it is one of the levels that we go through. I really do like the little. So I hit all the. Then we get to love room. Casually, this room's very hard, very long. It's hard. It's not. We're going to be skipping it. There's a nice little trick called Lava Room Skip. We're going to... Bouncing over. So to go on to this ice block. I'm going to hop, hop. There you go. I'm going to quickly take these guys out and explain the trick. Because I realised I just showed it and it. Basically, these ice blocks are really good at convert at a conserve, a conserve momentum and giving it more to you. So, go. What you want to do? You want on here, swing side to side, and then jump off. And when you're really near bottom, you want to um, attach the ice block. That will give you a massive burst of momentum, and you can just hop onto these cogs here and skip the entirety of lava room. I love a room. So now we're very much nearly in. Just gotta do the SpongeBob challenge and level. We break open this wall and nice to watch. Make sure you break open the wall, pause, and saves us going over. Yep. This is um fun funny enough, uh oh the old record holder and person help like Ruby. Um he has a quick cycle for this. It's like I would argue borderline task level, though some of the guys have got it's just very hard that it's not worth. It. And it's all for this little box through at the end. You see it uh Going to be at bottom when we go there, so we this far a bit. You want a you can wait or you can go for it and I'll make it. So I waited just to be safe. It's better to be safe than sorry. Because take so you can take on me. Back to our 17th token. We end this run by the way with 52 tokens. Show you at the end of all sponge boards, you can pause and do stuff like that. We're back as Patrick, and we're just going to finish off the level. Uh, the entire part of this level, by the way, if you can't remember, we're looking for the path of the in the movie Bugs Took. And it's all constantly being thrown away at the expense of. 
it, it, the, the cutscenes are quite. There's no. Group. Oh. Um, normally I hit that with my. Now we're at the end of the level. This is something I obviously back on the box. Hit the end of level trigger, which was actually in that slide funny enough. Um while you're sliding you hit enemy damage them. Ooh. Oh. And that's it, you just take out the end, try not to play because you That's that. So we're now coming up to yet another driving level. This one's slightly different. This one there's again no choice because it's out of bounds, but you need to collect all five keys for the cheese uh, But this one rather than just do one three laps, so we we're gonna do a specific so in this tunnel, go ahead down the right. And turn. Collecting nitros is way to use. And there's the key. And now off this car or truck with the ramp on it, we're going to ramp off it and collect our second key. Sadly, I missed that. I won't be able to collect that. I even missed the treasure chest. Wow. I'm not doing good today. It's it. So we're going to Nitro and collect this third key. They're like non essentials, I just like click. Turns here are quite tight, so if you want, if you, you don't always have to turn them. So, there's a, we have to do this in a minimum of perhaps, because the fifth key. Triggered after getting just up there. So we're just going to be driving through it actually. And then we're just going to turbo through this straight bit. I'm a bit low on nitro, that's why but nitro. I say I use turbo and nitro. And there's our four key. There's a key. We only need one more key. Oh, and now we will go lower rook slightly quicker. If not, then old habits die hard. I'm teaching you guys bad old habits. Sue me. So if we do successfully, oh, you'll see the. That that panel will propel us on oh, as Sponge says. It makes a ramp and it means we can get the final key. The one little thing we do in this level is it expects us to go through the ending segment, which is a bit hard, you know. Oh it's it's low driving turning stuff. We just gotta turn around. And um yeah, we, we, we literally just turn around. And we can nitro to the end because we now have all five keys. Now we're to the first big boss, of it, which is um, I'll let you pet Miss Whiskers. So because of that, at the next zone screen, I'm going to have to scroll my splits down. It, this boss is exact same. Um, the car upgrade car wheel actually does more damage to it, so it means each phase is just hit. Well, the first phase is just two hit, and then in the second and third phase, we use the upgraded smash. Um, a stuns the tongue. B does more damage to it, so it means you hit each phase. But like so, so he's damaged and he's stunned. That means. So while he's 
coming out, we can actually hit him. But uh, if you go too close to the edge, he will try and come through the edge on the. And that's Frogfish. It's the exact same as. Next up is Rock Slide. Rock Slide has quite a few little skips and tricks and tips. Mix and mix and tips. But it's a very enjoyable. It, I like this slide. Maybe we only do it once. So this level we use um, damage boost and no death zone. So, well, zones where they fail to put a kill. Uh, do you no know, skip it. So first of all, we're just going to jump off and hit this monster. And that damage boost allows us to skip the first little loop. It is a bit of a precise jump, but you once you see it, you will get you you think you think that um you you think you'd know it as a kid, but uh, you don't though. So. Rock slide is also a level that as a kid quite a few arts got lost in before our route. Next trick coming up is um I call it lamp slip lamp skip because I use a lamp setter up. No one else really calls it that we just call that skip. We're really bad with our skip name in this game. Um it's just coming up ahead. We take this shortcut area at this lamp we are just going to turn right and turn through it. I use the camera to position myself. Uh, you want to go through it, you don't want to jump it, because then you will actually hit a kill zone and hands will away. So it literally is just, you just turn and save a good 30 or so. If this is if this is done optimally, this takes about 4 minutes. And we'll just talk through. Another minor skip at this little weed here. We're just going to double jump. Saves us going through a monster. Doesn't it doesn't like reset it kill us? It doesn't take us back. So do it. Uh, there's one more skip in this level, and it saves 30 seconds. But if you fail to do it, and it's quite easy, up it loops you for you. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Hopefully, do it first time. And then you can decide. So this is like a bit of a scary level. This is a children's game, so just to remind people there are absolutely no jump scares. Bar that one. And that is a little joke that is there from the community because I said it. Everything it with is a uh, Boshi didn't run from 14, and it sort of just evolved. Everyone says it when they're running this game for fun, or like if they're showing off movie, they go, "Oh, jump scare!" Bar that one. So coming up is the final skip. It's like lamp skip, though we use a weed to turn. There's little weeds in the ground that we use to turn, and we have to jump. So it's that little grey weed just coming up ahead. Or we'll turn on it, and that's successful. So you notice I turned, jumped. And jumped again. If you're unsuccessful, you can sort of yourself just going forward. Like, ah, I failed it. Uh, sometimes hands just. If you, do, if you do it properly, you can sort of press down your camera. And, uh. Yeah. It, it saves 30 seconds. That means those uh, screen platforms, they always come the same thing. Oh, and now that we're men, which is really where this game starts popping. We get the sponge balls um, because it, we come out of um, Rockside with 22 tokens if you don't do your sandwich drive and we get sponge ball, we upgrade it so it now does more damage and has an AoE. You'll see it explodes. Oh. Uh, 
by a bit. Here we're going to do a nice little cutscene skip by throwing these and then two things up. And I actually missed it. So, oh, I saved it by activating the cutscene. But if you do it properly, you don't get this now. Second one, you don't get a cutscene. It's a little swag strat. There's a lot of swag strats in this game. A second, but look. Over. Oh, it's coming to the inside monster bit with these two. Get rid, get rid of that monster holding our manly friend Patrick. Another nice little thing about this game is the little touch they do. You have mustaches on. I don't want to say, but uh, what hits? So. I bowl on here because it helps hit the stuff and plus a load of man this time. So now we're just going to skip doing a little bit. I hop this box and I hop the box's arc. It goes up and down. I'll jump onto this boil. Off this boy, we're going to jump on the, and then we're going to do the uh, bungee challenge. Yay! Uh, interesting thing: when setting up infinite bungees on these bungees, um, you will actually destroy them from the bottom. So it's quite, it, it is quick and recommended. Set up the infinite bungees, especially on this last one. So there you go. Sadly, I got hit, so when you get hit, as I mentioned earlier, you're in bungee. You have to reset. Box. And now we're going to hit this enemy to. I'm sadly on 1 HP because sometimes N spaces in the game and this predict Not where you are, but wait. I'm going to play safe. Right. And normally we'd have to hit those buttons. Wall jump, but using those little spots on the ground, you can just bash boost them. So now we're coming up to my favourite part. Second thing. Um, recognize this monster earlier? This guy scared us. He, this guy did the jump scare. He's a bit of a nasty fellow. And um, one HP because they can enemies. But um, what you're supposed to be doing? Is you're supposed to casually, you know, dodge enemies, dodge bits of the uh, while six times punch ball. But um, they never actually predicted you guys going behind him. And we can just go behind him, be safe from all the end, safe from all falling bits. Twice, twice, we made it, and um, we can just hit him and get revenge for being a jump scare. Oh! So we're now at the final part. Then, normally, this be like a lot. Hit stuff, bounce around. We win the one. We go hop on this door and hop onto here. So already we just skipped part. I'm going to skip the rest of this challenge so by bouncing on here. When I just start my bounce, grab to go forward, jumps and spin and run ledge grab over. Sadly, I was not successful. So you, it, it's a bit of a hard trick to set up. Once you get a setup for it. I'm just a bit rusty at it. It's, it's generally 70 30. I get it 70% of the time. So I, I generally go here. So, as you saw, you can ledge grab from a ridiculous range away, but it's worth it. We're now coming up to possibly the hardest trick in this, view, which is Chris Skip. Chris Skip. 
Great point to hear. It's a double bash. It's a double chained bash boost. Uh, what I mean by that is we're going to bash boost off the lava onto the monster's head, and then we're going to bash boost again. And let's go get ourselves to the frozen lava leg. So go, go here, go away, jump, jump, and then jump. So I use that little corner of the bit there to jump, jump, and then I'm going to bash boost. You saw I went slightly to the right there, so you can crack yourself in the air and go towards the left. You then hit the monster's head. Hold down bash again, like the so, and um, you bash boost over to here, and then just pause and walk to the frozen. So now we're at this end bit. Go quickly swap to Patrick. We're just going to do um, swing starfish because we are swinging swing starfish, and there's a trick you can do for this. Again, Max has to talk on it. He saves twenty seconds, and it's a bit of an annoying setup, so that's why I'm just doing this casually. Aren't we all over the floating block challenge? This is the one where recent, there's been new tech found in the last couple of months that allows us to do this very quickly. I'm not going to show off. It's, I've gotten it twice in practice, just yeah. So, what we want to do again, cartwheel, there's spikes everywhere, so be careful. It will just spike your function. But yeah, Nanak Woman is one of the more broken notes. It's, a, it's quite fun when you get down the crit skip. If you do it first try, it does look. It's like Bash Bruce. But wait, another one! So you're left with one HP. Oh. That's a bit of an annoying bit. Because you can't really tell how you're going to make it. I and make it. It's like a rom com, but not in any way like a rom com. So you 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 generally get the timing of blocks. They all turn on their own certain time. So I was a bit early I'm thinking for that one. And um I almost did I almost paid for it but I managed to save it. So at the end here, there's loads of moving blocks. It's scary, it's terrifying. We're just going to cartwheel to the side of them. And then, if you cartwheel to the side, you can then just sort of turn back in at the bottom. And collect the token. So now we're at fun for again. Hit this for some and this points. But yeah, I should probably explain the significance of Chris Skip. Chris Skip skips an arena. He's a little mini for mini boss fight. Skips riding the monster. It's a very big skip, so it's a big. It's arguably the hardest trick in the or in the beginning run, not the actual run. So now we're to everyone's favorite level. Shell City Dead Ahead. I have issues with this. Gives us Patrick's throw, which is nice. And you upgrade, you can charge it, which allows for long throws. Add that do. Much. I have issues with this. I'll explain them later. First of all, we're going to do a nice little cutscene skip. A little, those two jolts there that you see. Um, there's new enemy in this level, Mervs, not a nice enemy. And if you hop, hop along the side there, you will, yeah, you'll be. So here, normally you have to throw the fruit onto here with this cartwheel double jump. Or, you know, in my case, this cartwheel double jump fail. So 
I'm jumping poorly. Christ wet. So normally if I practice it I don't get edge grab. But you sort of want to just help me around the side. And you'll be fine. I'm sorry that was a really poor showing up. But welcome to one of the main reasons that isn't that's a really easy trick that I was just messing up. So this bit, this entire area is here is why I don't like it. Okay. But uh, first of all, Circle of Malice. Very hard swing challenge. We're not going to do it. So can't wheel into the wall. To help get us. Okay, and then we're going to can't wheel around the side and double. Now I was a bit too far with my car wheel, but uh, you saw that I was just about to make it for a ledge grab. We're going to can't wheel. Double jump. And that just, even with one death, one thing, yeah, this is so much quicker. You'll see for an experienced run like me too, I still miss. It happened. Oh yeah, these are nerves. I, you, I can't ignore them. They can do that to you. I love nerves. They, they are the best well-designed enemy in the game. So I have to wait till the last. So I let this guy hit me once and then if he, if he hits you on the ground, you're fine. But yeah, welcome to why we don't spawn that mer earlier. So this bit, normally we have to carry melon, what melon up here. Um, again with this guy, car wheel. And you want to generally land here, then you sort of hop on there but yeah we avoid that it's a bit of a hard challenge casually we avoid that just by our wheel hit me the closer you are to a merv by the way the more the higher frequency it shoots it lays it's laser with 